Illumination weather. It is Tuesday, October 1st of 2024, and boy, am I glad to be back here at One Nation Weather with another update video. My internet is finally getting restored in the wake of the inland impacts that I received here in South Carolina from Hurricane Helene. So many people in the southeastern United States and southern Appalachians were affected by this storm, even as far inland as the Midwest. Ohio Valley, some 50 plus mile per hour wind gusts were clocked in from this storm. So I hope everybody who saw damage from Helene has finally gotten to a point where everything is beginning to get into the final stages of cleanup. But I know there are so many who are not in that stage. In fact, there's still people missing. I just wanted to call that out here at the start of the video before getting into the headlines. For for today's video but let's go ahead and get right into those number one is that quiet weather is ahead there are going to be still some areas that need to watch for storms though i'll cover that in this video after that we'll get into the temperature update across the country as unseasonably warm conditions for october are kicking in there are some exceptions though Tropical weather update will be the last thing I do in this video as hurricane season is kicking up a month late into a September like conditions across the tropics. All right, with those headlines in mind, I want to go ahead and dive right into the future radar overview and kind of show you where some showers and storms are going to be as we go through the next seven days, but overall how much of the country is going to be remaining dry. It all starts out here on the day I'm filming this video on our Tuesday, October 1st of 2024. You can see we've got some isolated showers moving through some parts of the mid-Atlantic back into the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, but overall just some cloudiness in this region and most of the rest of the country either dry and sunny or a little bit dry and cloudy. Either way, much of the country is staying on that drier side and that will continue to be the trend as we go into our wednesday october 2nd find some of those greens on the map it's very hard to do few showers very isolated possible there from northern north carolina up to around the new york state region into our wednesday afternoon few showers and storms here or there in florida other than that everybody else remaining on that dry side into our Thursday. The trend remains the same. We will begin to notice some moisture developing in the Gulf of Mexico. I will discuss that a little bit more towards the tropical discussion later in the video, so stick around for that if you live in those communities. But I want to kind of skip ahead to our Saturday afternoon when you can really begin to notice the next quick rainmaker for some of the northern tier getting going. Notice some of these black lines and red lines getting closer together are kind of tightening up into the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Iowa Saturday. This is as we're going to have a low pressure kind of banking up against high pressure ridging that's just to the east of it as we go into this time frame. And that will begin to kick up a little bit of that gustier wind in the Midwest and the Northern Plains Saturday going into Sunday and bring up a little bit of that shower and storm chance into the evening and nighttime Saturday going through our Sunday. Here we go Saturday evening. Notice across parts of Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, we could get a few scattered showers and storms here or there. Gustier winds possible as these move through, but this will be a very quick hitting low pressure system by the time we get into our Sunday afternoon. If anything pops up, it looks like it'll be from points in western parts of Ohio and eastern Michigan, eastward from there. So into Ohio, parts of Pennsylvania and New York, that's where the best chance will, from some showers and storms will be there. And then notice by the time we get into our Monday afternoon, we see the swing through Maine and the rest of the New England states, and everything is out of there by the time we go to the middle of next week, as once again, we continue to see quiet weather and what is going to be shown to you as ridging taking hold. Before the discussion on how that ridging is really going to take hold, I just want to really show you how much rain we are going to be seeing or the lack of that rain through the next several days across the United States. Let's go ahead and jump ahead through the upcoming weekend so I can include that front that I just showed you moving through the Midwest and into some parts of the East. This is from the time I'm filming this video late on our Tuesday, October 1st through the end of Monday, October 7th, according to the Weather Prediction Center. Other than some very heavy rain and very close to the Gulf Coast, but overall mostly offshore, Pretty much all of the country staying in this white dry zone, from California to Texas, from Utah up to the Dakotas, pretty much no drops of rain, no drops of mountain snow occurring. And then the only other area is seeing some precipitation in this general zone, and that's going to be really from a couple of fronts here or there, adding up a tenth to a quarter of an inch at a time, and that is not going to really be enough to cause any sort of flooding. So that's the good news. A lot of places that have been wet recently drying out, although we do need some of the rain the further north you go and away from where some of the impacts from Helene just hit. Now taking a look at the mid-level pattern map about into the 15 to 20,000 foot range in the atmosphere. This is really going to give you a look at how what's happening in the atmosphere will affect what's actually going on down here at the surface. And you notice all these oranges and reds that are going to be going across the map as I play it out. Let's jump through our Wednesday, October 2nd, moving into our Thursday, October 3rd, and into our early Friday, October 4th all across the United States from California to Maine. We're seeing these yellows and at least some areas of orange as well picking up. This indicates some higher than normal pressure in the atmosphere and this is what you call ridging. That means that when we have ridging, we tend to get warmer than average conditions and that is exactly what's going to be going on. 
warmer and drier weather across a lot of the country, at least in comparison to this time of year. Here we go into our Saturday, October 5th, and a significant ridge is going to really begin to build on up here into the northern U.S., moving out of Kansas up here to Minnesota, moving out of Tennessee up here to Michigan. You can really see some of those oranges increasing. We're also going to have a little bit of a dig in the jet stream kind of coming in to meet up against that ridge, and that is that little piece of energy that's going to be trekking through southern Canada and into the far northern U.S. that I mentioned in the precipitation side of this video. Notice how that's going to cut on through the ridging, and then look what develops right back behind it. More and more ridging. The temperatures are just going to continue to remain in that trend of being warmer than average, and the precipitation will probably continue to be below average for a lot of the U.S. through at least the foreseeable future. Here's what that looks like on the actual temperature setup map that I've created for you here at One Nation Weather. This is as we go into our Wednesday, October 2nd of 2024. You can see that other than a brief area of some cooler than average air behind a current front that we're seeing in the east that I mentioned for our Tuesday afternoon showers that we're seeing right now while I film this, all of the country really remaining warmer than average from California to Nevada and then up there into some parts of Wyoming, Montana. And then over into the Dakotas and Minnesota, temperatures are running 10, 15, 20 plus degrees above normal for this time of the year. That is just as we go into our October 2nd. Here we go, moving into our October 4th. Notice the trend. Even more areas filling in with that ridging and those warmer than average conditions. This really lines up exactly with that mid-level pattern map I showed you just a minute ago. Over here in a pocket of the Ohio Valley into the northeast will be well above average on our October 4th. Down here in the Southern Plains, well above average, and even into the Mountain West, continuing with those above average conditions. Only Florida and Washington State, a little bit below average for some parts of the state, at least during this date. That's on Friday. And then as we go into the upcoming weekend around Sunday, notice you can see the impact of those closer to average temperatures there from our low pressure in Minnesota, Wisconsin, cutting on through into our Sunday. Other than that, we're seeing some actually warmer than average conditions stretching ahead of that very weak front traversing the northern U.S. this weekend. So up there in Ohio, Indiana, we could see some temperatures 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Back here to Texas, 10 to 15 degrees above normal and into the Mountain West, as well as the Southwest U.S., still looking at 10, 15, 20 degrees above normal. What a pattern we're going to be seeing. It is going to be very consistently the same in terms of those numbers above average for a lot of the country in the next several days. All right, now you're taking a look at the high temperature forecast graphics. We're going to go through the next several days using the National Digital Forecast Database, and this really helps visualize those anomalies I just showed you with actual numbers. And as we go into our Wednesday, October 2nd of 2024 here, you can see across the country where some of the cooler than average areas are and where those warmer than average areas are. And overall, it's a lot of these deeper reds that we're seeing across the country, warmer than average conditions being that dominant trend for the next several days. If you're not in this circled area, we are a little bit cooler, so up there in the far northern parts of Washington State, Idaho, Montana, and into North Dakota, we're seeing some 60s there. Also some 60s and 70s behind that weak near-term front here in the Midwest, heading into the Ohio Valley and Northeast. That is not going to be a trend that lasts, but look inside the circled areas. We've got plenty of 80s and 90s, even some triple digits here in the valleys of California on our Wednesday afternoon. Moving into our Thursday, October 3rd of 2024, a lot of the same more 90s getting going in the Southern Plains, triple digits in some of the valleys of the Southwest, some parts of the North Central Tier, remaining on a little bit of that cooler side. Friday afternoon, more 70s moving as far north as the Dakotas into Minnesota and Wisconsin. And then I want to pause it here on our Saturday. You can see some of the warmth actually trying to move on up ahead of that trough that's going to make its way out of the mountain west into this weekend. So up here into parts of Kansas, Nebraska, into parts of Iowa. We're going to be seeing many of those upper 80s and some of those little mid 90s. Anywhere you see a box on screen as I go through these daily temperatures, that is where a record maximum high is anticipated. So be on the lookout for those. In the east here on our Saturday afternoon, pretty mild, but again, some of these numbers are running a little bit above average as we're seeing a lot of 70s move up into the Great Lakes and Northeast, a lot of the low to mid 80s here in some parts of Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Sunday afternoon, look at this, we've got a little bit of some of those 80s being able to sneak on up here into the Midwest and Ohio Valley, but heat is a little bit more relative this time of the year, right, because these numbers are running above average, yet they don't feel quite as hot as that summer heat, and there's a little bit lower humidity. Running in behind these numbers, we're seeing at plenty of 50s and 60s up there in the far northern parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin Sunday. Look at that. You can really see how that weak little front is actually going to do a big dent to our temperatures here in the east by the time we go into our Monday, October 7th. 70s in Iowa, some upper 60s in parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and even some 50s getting in the mix in the far inland parts of the New England regions. Meanwhile, here in the west, our next ridge is already going to be on the build into the early parts of next week, and I foresee that that will continue to move eastward by the time we go to midweek. 
All right, the last thing I want to discuss in this video is the tropical weather outlook, the seven-day graphical outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. And you can see there are a few areas to watch. The Atlantic is basically as active as it has been all season within these last few weeks here. We've seen some landfalls. We've been looking out for some of these areas here in the Gulf and Caribbean a lot more than we actually have not been. And this is more typical of early September as opposed to early October to be looking like this. But nevertheless, here we are, and let's go ahead and get right into the details. First of all, I do want to point out that this orange area that you can see right here somewhat close to home has about a 40 percent chance of development as of when i'm filming this video you saw it with some of that moisture back there earlier when i was discussing the precipitation on land in the usa there is a pretty low chance that this becomes anything substantial especially a hurricane but we'll have to watch for tropical depression or storm development close to home as we go through the next seven days that's something to watch and then out here in the open atlantic you can see tropical storm kirk probably about to become a hurricane kirk right around or just as I'm filming this video. And then we've also got an area to watch right behind it. These areas are going to be making their way like this to the Atlantic and pose no threat to the mainland USA. Let's go ahead and play that out here using the future radar from the European model real quick. The Atlantic on our Tuesday afternoon, you can see our areas to watch some of that rain there in the Caribbean. And then our two entities out there in the Atlantic, one already named, one very soon to become Leslie out there in the open waters. By the time we get here to around our Thursday, October 3rd of 2024, notice this model and most models at this point don't really have much going on other than some continued rainfall there in the Gulf and Caribbean. We can see Kirk strengthening up. It is anticipated by the Hurricane Center to become a major hurricane at some point as we go through the next few days while it makes its way through the central tropical Atlantic. Also right behind Kirk, you can see Leslie probably forming into a tropical storm within the next 48 hours. So by Thursday, probably looking at at least a mid-grade tropical storm out there in the main development region of the Atlantic. Continue to watch that area close to home because I know that's what affects us the most. This model doesn't really have much going on, and that's the good news. I think things have really been downturning, honestly, with that chance of development there close to home in the southern gulf. We'll have to watch, but it doesn't look as significant. And what definitely isn't significant, at least for the United States, is Kirk being a very strong hurricane way out over the open waters in east of Bermuda, and Leslie trying to form into the next major hurricane. Neither one of these pose a threat to the mainland USA. I will continue to say that. If you hear anybody saying that they could veer off in that direction, no models are having that type of track occurring. And notice, really, as we go without t through time, excuse me, you really not much going on. And that brings us to the conclusion of another raw video without much real editing other than some zooming in on some of the things that I showed you and circled on screen. Hopefully you enjoyed this kind of content where I just kind of analyze the models and bring it to you as straightforwardly as I can. If you want more consistent, accurate, and educational forecast videos in the future, I'm almost to 5,400 subscribers. I'm on my way to 6,000. I would love for you to be one of them as I continue to make forecast videos. Also, of course, make sure you are checking out the Weather Bell free trial below in the description to this video if you want weather model maps like the ones I've been using throughout this video. That is it for this update. I hope everyone continues to recover effectively if in the areas impacted by Helene. I'm praying for you guys there, as I obviously have seen some of the destruction myself. That is it for this update. I will catch you in the next video, everyone. See you then. One Nation Weather.